in the years that you're dealing with sex, since the beginning of time of sex in the media, and probably in a very conservative society like it was in the States at the time, which I don't understand, I'll tell you why, because I thought that the sexual revolution of the 70s started in the States. I used to go to New York and go to Studio 54, and you know what was happening everywhere, in Studio 54, sex everywhere. Also, there was a club. Before AIDS. Be, yeah, before the 80s. There was a club which was called Plato's Retreat, that people could have menace You went there? I did go there. I would never go there. Because you're, you're a I'm conservative. I'm old-fashioned. Not. And it's you're clear, old-fashioned. But I know what it is. Now, let me go let, ahead. So let me tell you. Since this was happening in New York in the 70s, and people were watching Deep Throat uh, in the cinemas, and porn was no longer an issue, why the media, like radio and TV in the States, were so backwards in talking about sex, and you had to break mm -hmm. new ground. But the reason I was able to break new grounds, the attorneys were sitting there when I did radio and television, listening carefully, only in the beginning. The reason I was able to do that is because I was already 50 years old. I so, so there was a prejudice. If you were a woman that was 5'10", with big breasts could not have done and it. blonde hair and no accent. She could never. Never. She could never. Your accent helped. Your age because my and accent. Your size. Right. So accent. you were blessed being short. Absolutely. And you were at the right age to break the ground. Right. And and the accent. And the accent. When you opened the radio, you knew it was me every Sunday night, ten, from ten to twelve, people got into their cars. They came back from weekend. And they made sex in the back seat? No. No. They Listen drove home, but I provided them with foreplay because I talked about sex from 10 to 12. They got home and they had sex. So, in other words, <laughs> you were the architect of healthy erections and healthy <laughs> orgasms in, you, in the country that you chose to start your career. <laughs> Is well, that correct? That's correct. Did you accept the title? I accept the title. Erection and Orgasm But I wasn't architect. the only one. I, I wasn't the only one. Who else? Now, Hel Dr. Helen Singer Kaplan trained me. She was an MD, a psychiatrist, and a sex therapist. The, the best description, the funniest description of you I ever heard <laughs> is that you were a cross between Henry Kissinger and Minnie Mouse. Right. Is that I, amazing? I like that because I love Minnie Mouse and I respect Kissinger. So you have and respect his and accent, His accent is stronger than mine. So, but I was fortunate that I was never sitting there. Excuse me, but be honest with me. Is the accent genuine oh, or it's, it's your trademark and you never gave it up? That's a very good question. Because I, I was told that when you want, you can talk with a New Jersey accent. No, not true. No? Somebody told you a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but, but lies are very useful because by mentioning the lies, you can get the truth. So of what's course. the truth behind your the accent? The truth is... You never gave it up. Never. But, but I have to tell you, they, talk, they asked me to give it up, to take speech lessons. I made one dollar an hour in New York. Speech lessons. Who can have speech lessons? The woman who One dollar per hour you paid? No. Oh, you One dollar I made cleaning houses. Oh, you cleaned houses Yes, as well. in the beginning. The woman who played me in the theater, Becoming Dr. Ruth, you can see it on YouTube. Deborah Jo Rapp, she just won an yes. award. She had to take how tall, a speech. How tall is she? Tiny little taller than me. Oh, she is? Yeah, younger than me. She's a wonderful actress. And guess what? She had to pay a speech coach and when you went to, to learn my accent. When you, you, when you went to see the show, why, times. why did you sit in row K? How did you know? I'm a psychic. I knew that you would be wearing Merrell beige. Okay, two reasons for K. I did not want her to see me. She knew I was there. Because, because of I camera freeze, because yes. of stage fright. I did not want her to yeah. do that. But there's another reason, which maybe you don't know. It's because of and your name. How do you know that? Tell me your name. Oh boy. My name in Germany and in Switzerland was Carola. Can you say that? Carola. 
Very nice. If you want me to have a German accent while I speak yeah. English, I can continue the interview, meet a German, genuine German <laughs> accent in my English. Very good. Did you like that? No, no. no. Talk your regular. <laughs> However, I have to tell you, in, when I came to Palestine, before it was Israel, they said you can't be called Carola because it's too German. So you t I took my middle name, Ruth. Thank God I did. Dr. Carola. No, do, Dr. Carola, wouldn't forget have it. I, Probably you would have but failed. But every place that I sign my books, anything that I sign, I put Carola. with K Westheimer. That's wonderful. I keep my two feet firmly planted in the past, old-fashioned, but I do. But your mind is in the future. My mind is in the future. That's the best, the best recipe that I could think people should follow if they want to be traditional, but at the same time have a futuristic vision. And being sexually literate. Sexually literate means to know about the recent research that older people, not only what we talked about, sex in the morning, women to use a lubricant so it's not painful, men knowing that they can't have as firm an erection as before. I see you nodding sure. your head. I don't ask personal questions. You can I'm, ask me any personal question you want that. because you are the therapist. I so know. without asking questions, you cannot find so out tell your if audience, I need help or anything. Tell your audience, I'm going to ask you the questions later, alone, when we are alone. <laughs> Θα με ρωτήσει προσωπικές ερωτήσεις αργότερα όταν είμαστε μόνοι μας. Αυτό σημαίνει ότι δεν θα έχετε την ευκαιρία να ανακυκλώσετε στα blogs και στα πρωινάδικα και τα μεσημεριανάδικα τις συμβουλές που θα ήθελα να έχω από τη δόκτωρα Ruth. Tell them, if I do another program which I don't know, uh, I don't have to tell them because we subtitled this conversation. The two of us. Yes. The two of us. The two of us for two hours. For two hours. That would be fun. Not two hours. No, not Ten two times two hours. Ten times two hours. Yes. And we will but be talking about sex, sex. But, but don't have any. No. You have a girlfriend. Ah, yes, absolutely. Okay, I'm a widow. You, do you, you have, have a boyfriend? A, not yet. Uh, but you have a girlfriend. This is so the right bad. country to find <laughs> one. Okay, so. let me ask you a question which came to my mind as you were talking about your Carola years. Um, when you first had sex, you were 17. Is that correct? He, he did well, his it, It's in your biography, so you cannot... He did his homework. It's, it's, I did say that in the it, biography. It a, was on a kibbutz in Israel. He was gorgeous. No, but this question brings another question. I was lucky. What? I didn't use con contraceptive yes. and I didn't get pregnant. I was just lucky. Uh, were there condoms at the time? No. There were condoms there were at condoms. the time, but I don't know if anybody had a condom in the kibbutz. <laughs> Nobody the had kibbutz? money. <laughs> oh my God, that would be luxury. Huh? Uh, my question is, young girls that are growing up after the, the, the age of 13 or 14, what would you think is the right age for them to first have sex? I would say, don't mention 13, 14. You know that I'm old fashioned and a square. Yes. I would say, 17 if they are in love and if they know about using contraceptives because I don't want anybody to have to have an abortion. I'm also worried these days about older people and young people. They think they don't have to worry about AIDS. Not so. Sexually transmitted diseases everybody has to worry so about. So the norm you would say it's 17 I would 18. say 17 18. Right. So people who first made love, se had sex at 19, should not feel that they were late bloomers, right? No, they should feel that they waited for the right person to have sex with. You Is will there never such a thing? Yes. The right you, person? Yes, you will never forget your first sexual experience, ever. And if you so do forget don't just it, then it was forgettable. Then, right. Yes. Then, then you were drunk. Yes. So don't just throw it away. Make sure that the stars twinkle, that it's beautiful, that you are in love, that there's a relationship, even if it's not for a whole lifetime. But you have to know not to do it when you are drunk. Wisely spoken, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, do they call you doctor? I mean, yeah. do they address wow. you as doctor? Yes, I have a doctorate in the study but of the family. Do you like to be addressed as doctor, like a, Absolutely. Like a proctologist or a, no or a podologist or whatever? No problem. Dr. Ruth is fine because they couldn't say Westheimer too long. Of a course, name. of course. So they started to say Dr. Ruth before any of the other Dr. So and so, Dr. So and so in the United States. It's fine with me as long as they listen to me, as long as the information that we have gets transmitted, and as long as they listen to me by hearing, to be careful not to have unprotected sex, and to be careful of not getting the other sexually transmitted. Very last diseases. question. Is I could talk to you 10 hours. <laughs> I, I could talk last for, question. for 20. But <laughs> But you see, our real time is totally different than television time, and you know that. Um, purposely, I didn't do any breaks for commercials, because that would totally screw up our conversation. Don't say story. another word instead of screw up. Screw up is nice. Don't no. you like a screwdriver? It's a very useful no, thing. No, say break up. Go ahead. OK. <laughs> I love you correcting me, because I may, maybe, I'm not sure, come to the right path of life with all this advice that I'm getting <laughs> as to how to that. Age difference. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that is outrageous between a man and a woman I as an age difference? Mm -hmm. And what would you define, how would you define that we outrageous? Are, we are very fortunate. It used to be an older gentleman with a young gorgeous woman walking in and everybody knew he had money. Right. And that's the rela uh, relationship. They thought they knew. It has changed. Today, if an older woman walks into a restaurant with a young man, not always do they think he's a gigolo. Relationships can flourish with different I understand ages. the theory, but in practice, in, in reality. Practice, I would say a 20-year-old going with a 70-year-old man, I would raise my eyebrows. Right. I uh, would how say, about a 30-year-old going with a 70-year-old? And now I'm careful, because I don't know how old your girlfriend is. It depends on the maturity. It depends on I the relationship. Your, I love your investigative mind. <laughs> you know, because you're thinking deviously. <laughs> you're thinking like a sex, a sex therapist, and you right. always dig right. around, the, around the question. I love that. But Thank you me. answered my question. Thank you. And probably my girlfriend is going to be happy, actually, to, to listen to that. Um, I, I indeed heard a lot of good stuff today. And I think that the Greeks that you really were generous in mentioning a lot of times, must be equally happy. I would be happier if we had two hours, but I want to thank you for several reasons. First of all, for being a sniper and never have to kill somebody. Secondly, for coming out and speaking for the, dep for the oppressed sex maniacs <laughs> of this <laughs> last century at a time that everybody was afraid of mentioning the orgasm. word orgasm <laughs> on the screen or on the mic. Thirdly, because you came to Greece and people were ecstatic to think, my God, Dr. Ruth is going to be an eco show. Um, and fourth, because at the age of 86, you are younger than many 30-year-old women that I know. Ooh, that makes me happy. And hey, that makes me happy. May, may I have your hand? Yes. You have the ball. And Thank kiss you. you and wish you, you best of luck in the next 14 years when we celebrate in New York your 100 years. And you'll be there. I'll be there. You promise? You bet. And we'll have a cake. You bet your ass. But before that, <laughs> let's not. <laughs> I heard it. I heard it. But before that, you and I will be in touch when you come to New York. Absolutely so. Okay. Thank you. Get permission from your girlfriend. She, she we, gave it to me already. That we can have dinner. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> ε, μετά από τόσο σεξ μην περιμένετε να σας πω όνειρα γλυκά και ασκανδάλιστα Αν μεν έχετε πλάι σας πρόθυμο σύντροφο Φουσκωτή κούκλα, δονητή Η ευχή είναι βούρ Αν είσαστε μόνοι στο κρεβάτι Όνειρα γλυκά και σκανδαλισμένα Μουσική